Hey everyone, how's it going? Welcome back to Let's Play Control. We're gonna have ourselves a little occult ritual today. It's gonna be a blast. But first, before we can enter the astral plane through the big tablet, ooh, we actually got pretty lucky there. Was able to seize the distorted right away. Or is it distortion? Either way, let's just call them Michael or Helen. Either way, uh, we have our sphere friend here. Oh, I did learn while I was going for that platinum, because I had to do so many extraneous fights, uh, that if you seize these boys, they actually do provide you that passive healing aura, and it is a significant amount of healing too. You basically become invincible for the duration that they're seized or until they die. Uh, but they're so evasive and decently durable that enemies can't kill it. They they can't do shit. It's great. Locke's ancient reason Abalone. Is this the lock slash key the board told me about? I love she acknowledges the weird way the board talks to her. Whether communicating conceptually or just speaking the words in her mind, blank slash blank. But also, I wonder what the former has to do with the foundation. Our nail is rebuilding slash loosening. Anyone who didn't do the fridge side quest uh, that led into the other former side quest is going to be a little bit taken aback by what happens entering into that ritual. But our good friend, uh, the worm, the one-eyed worm has made his first appearance since those side quests. This time playing a more plot critical role to what we're doing. What that role is? Oh god, I almost did the Doro Hidoro still lost in chaos episode uh stinger. <laughs> that show is so weird and good. If you like this game, there's a good chance you might like Doro Hidoro. It is unapologetically bizarre. Uh, and it is so, so full of imagination. Really having a good time watching that. I think I'm like two or three episodes from the end. And I love Nikaido. I love Nikaido and I love the villain, Mr. N. Uh, precisely because he is not super intimidating or even respected amongst his underlings. Like... They don't get treated like his minions. They will just rib him and make fun of him. And he's like, ah, you guys. <laughs> so good. <laughs> so now we are going to take this back to, I think it's the crossroads waypoint. Uh, where we have a different junction, a different path uh, to progress. Because we had two locations that we had to visit, the warehouse and the base camp. Uh, now that we are done the ritual near the warehouse, once we make it back to the crossroads, we can actually find a pretty quick path that gets us to the base camp. And there's another reason to come back here. You see over on the right, there is a ranger newly stationed here. And also, someone else has come with the Rangers. Someone who we have been eager to talk to. Oh, you see her? You saw her. It's Emily. Can't wait to talk to Emily of Pope again. Jesse, hey. She is such an entrapta. I love her. Down here? What are you doing down here, Emily? What do you mean? You called me down, remember? I'm pretty sure I didn't. No, that's right. You didn't. 
But then, I remember you needing me to come here. I mean, you even told me how to get in. Let's just chalk it up to synchronicity so we can get to work. She takes everything in stride. The Borg called me down here to deal with the situation. The astral plane is colliding with our world, I know. Isn't it fascinating? I never even considered that the astral plane could be a, a physical volume expanding beyond its dimensional container. The bleed is localized to this area, but its growth rate seems steady. Given time, it will consume the entire Bureau, and possibly beyond. That's what I'm here to stop. The Borg told me to fix the nail over there by dismantling four locks in the astral plane. Funny, I think it's put itself back together a bit. So that could be due to the law of inverse exchange. For every associated component you remove, this nail reconstructs. Or possibly some variation of anti-sympathy. Don't worry, I'll look into it. Did you notice all the Bureau infrastructure? It looks like there was a research team stationed down here at some point. Do you think Darling knew about this? I put money on it. That reminds me, have you seen Marshall? She contacted me over the hotline, but then I saw her walking around. I haven't seen her. The hotline only connects to extraplanar entities. Or dead people. But Marshall's proved time and time again that she's a survivor. That's exactly what I thought. Anyway, I've been looking into the minerals growing down here. Have you noticed how they insist on maintaining a certain form? Maybe some sort of a, a state memory, or they consciously prefer a certain shape? I think we're on a clock here, Emily. I need to stop the astral bleeding before it brings the oldest house down. See what you can find out from the nail in the meantime. And send out some rangers to look for Marshall. She may be in trouble. Will do, Jesse. If you see anything interesting, remember to take detailed notes. Jesse, you're back. So did you find anything noteworthy? The original Bureau expedition down here left so much interesting stuff behind. Like their ID cards. I picked up a weird one. It's pretty old. Oh wow, look at that. Yeah, I found a few ID cards myself. Or, more accurately, the Rangers found them for me. Are you starting a collection? I'm going for the whole set. I kid, of course. But I suppose they are sort of like baseball cards, except for Bureau stuff from the 60s. Hey, the one you found is different than mine. It looks like it's a higher clearance level. A rare one, then. Want to keep it, Emily? <laughs> yeah, I absolutely do. But I think you should hang on to it for now. High clearance access might come in handy. Sounds like you have something in mind. Guilty. See, I've been going through Dr. Ash's notes, or the ones I can find, anyway. Like Darling, he seemed to enjoy hiding his most relevant research. From what I gather, there is another floor beneath the warehouse with a special lab that requires five high-level staff members just to access. Here, take this. It's an old skeleton key. Something else the rangers found. I give them five bucks for every useful trinket they bring me. I'm gonna assume this key is my ticket to that lower floor. And that super secret lab you mentioned. Bingo bango, as Dr. Darling used to say. Well, keep your eyes peeled for more ID cards around the warehouse. If Ash's notes are reliable, and I'm sure they are, then five is the magic number. All the, the rangers have tapped into an old radio network they found around the foundation. So if you need backup, just call them at one of the stations. How did the Hiss get into the foundation? Same way we did, I imagine. But you need to remember that the Hiss are the embodiment of persistence. Their nature seems to be one of force, to find every possible vulnerability and exploit it. Their only goal is consumption. I'm sure there's plenty of goodies for them down here. The nail, for instance. If the Hiss could corrupt the nail, I'm sure they would have by now. It must not interest them in its broken state. They could be distracted by the numerous unknown paranatural materials I'm sure are lying around. These are the roots of the oldest house. The Hiss will find plenty of ways to make trouble. 
They're pretty good at that. So you've never heard of the Foundation, huh? I've never even seen the name referenced. Clearly it's highly classified, but for what reason? The problem with these kinds of closed off hidden areas is that they were likely sealed for good reason. But now no one is left to tell us what that reason was. Any guesses why the Bureau would hide something like this? I only know what I've observed. This place is spatially rigid, which means it doesn't shift like the rest of the oldest house. And before you ask why that is, I have to admit that I'm clueless. There's some signal interfering with my equipment, making it hard to get a clear reading. It's being emitted from the floor. Maybe I should have brought a jackhammer. The astral plane is already taking chunks out of this place, Emily. Let's not add to it. So let me get this straight. The astral plane is bleeding into the foundation. Correct. And that's happening because the nail is damaged. I'd say it's a bit more than damaged, but yes, that is my understanding. So what's the connection between the nail and the astral plane? <laughs> it's a good question. See, I always pictured objects of power as strings between our plane and the astral. If the nail has a similar relationship, then maybe it's more accurate to think of it like plumbing. Now that the nail is busted, sewage is gushing everywhere. Not the prettiest metaphor. Actually, the astral bleed. All right, now to that other path, uh, towards the base camp. So in contrast to, uh, the lighthearted Doro Hidoro talk earlier, this is going to get a little bit dark. Uh, with all the Operation Paperclip talk, and along with the general themes dealing with authoritarianism and fascism, you got me thinking about something that I had forgotten for, for quite some time. It's the black upside down triangle symbol, uh, which you can see prominently all over the game. Uh, most notably is the board, the black upside down pyramid, and all the ways that it's represented in game. Uh, whenever we see the board, it's this big monolith that you usually only see one face of anyway um, or any representation of the board like in the Ocean View Motel uh, the, one of the doors just has a black upside down triangle marking it this same symbol has a really really dark connotation that can't be ignored when we're taking into account the themes that we've been discussing um, it was a signifier used in Holocaust concentration camps. And what it demarcated specifically was antisocial behavior. Not in the sense that we know it colloquially. Um, in Nazi Germany, antisocial was more of a slur for a wide range of people, ranging from uh, trans people to sex workers to the homeless and so, so many more. People who didn't conform to very strict social norms. Um, also, disabled people who couldn't work, or a subsection of leftists who protested capitalist wage slavery by refusing to work. Um, or laborers who just went on strike. The thing that you have to keep in mind is that fascists are hyper-conformists, they always require an enemy, and are also hyper-capitalist. Concentration camps weren't just death camps, they were forced labor camps too. And Hitler wanted anyone who committed any noteworthy crime to be forced into one for 10 years, if I remember right? of mandatory labor. Come on. That really didn't do as much as I had hoped. Hmm. So, he figured that, hey, if they're going to be in a camp for 10 years doing forced labor anyway, they're going to be maladaptive for re-entry uh, re into society so he would just have them killed at the end of that 
sentence. Adolf Eichmann, the architect of the Holocaust, used America's own institutionalized policies of white supremacy, like the contemporary Jesus Christ. God damn it. Um, <clears throat> uh, like Jim Crow laws as inspiration. We know that, though some have chosen to forget this because that's a bitter pill to swallow. But it's a really necessary one. It's important historical context about America to keep in mind that we and what we were doing at the time was used as direct inspiration for one of the greatest atrocities in the history of our entire species. Now think about this. In America, the 13th Amendment to our Constitution abolished slavery. But we have a loophole. Prison doesn't matter if you commit murder or if you get caught with a dime bag of weed. You can go to jail for a long, long time either way. And in jail, you can face compulsory labor, for which you are paid almost nothing. In uh, blah, blah. Inmate firefighting companies in California can be forced to risk their lives battling wildfires for a dollar an hour. And a lot of those inmates are nonviolent drug offenders. Add to that, who makes up a disproportionate chunk of our prison population? It's people of color. And based on recidivism rates alone, we know that prisons in America don't prepare inmates to re-enter society. They are not rehabilitatory. I almost certainly butchered that word, now that I think about it. Oh, let's give this another shot. So do you see where I'm going with this? We have our own astonishingly cruel forced labor camps. To this day. And we pretend that they have legitimacy because it's legal. They're just prisons. They're meant to keep dangerous elements out of normal society. Horrifying. Uh, we can we can pull this off this time. Yeah, this is what messed me up before. Is not knowing where that came from. There's Okay, that's a problem. We can fix this. Oh, God. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, I went off on a tangent. Um, there is shockingly little online about this connection. The black triangles that we started this whole thing off on. Um, and the board. And if there is more, then I've had a pretty hard time finding it owing in part to the fact that it's actually pretty hard to Google things having to do with the video game Control. Because that name doesn't Google super well. And I'm not sure how to interpret that connection beyond just noticing it. Not too sure how to parse it. Uh, so I would love to hear more of what you read into that, with that historical context in mind. This area looks newer. Is it from the upper floors? And <laughs> we cap that very serious discussion off with silly ragdoll fits. <laughs> Oh, control contains multitudes. I have no idea how to segue out of that. <laughs> Except to say, 
Welcome to the collapsed Something department. A return to a slightly more traditional oldest house flavor. Foundation's new Coke. This is Coke Classic. By the way, if you missed my brand's video, you'll remember that Coca-Cola played an, uh, 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 I was gonna say instrumental role. Not necessarily true. They were Nazi collaborators. They created Fana for the Nazis. And I will never ever stop reminding everybody about that, especially uh, anyone who thinks that brands are their friends. Let's open up this shortcut and we will call it a day. This is actually a, a very odd time this deep into the game and the DLC to be getting that account of the house shifting. It does give us a little bit of extra context. I think this is... Ah, oh no, this is... Uh, there is an... There's a part two to the... The shift documents. That's actually fairly important if I remember right. So we'll have to keep an eye out for that. For now, thank you all for watching. Take it easy. Have a good one, y'all.